kindly subscribe, like, share, and comment. People with impunity. Is there any chance I could come back to 61st Street? Tagus would welcome you back with open arms. We're covering the opening of a new school in Tuskegee. You have never been south. I need to show the world there are colored people making something of their lives. Things are worse than I thought. You seem to have won the first battle. I intend to win the war. Please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Parker, can you hold that lever? I'm not Parker. Can you hold that lever still? It's shaking. This one? Yes, just hold it. Hold it steady. Thank you. <laughs> Miss... Uh, Peggy Scott. The writer. Are you early for our meeting or am I running behind? You're Mr. Fortune. I am. T. Thomas Fortune was born into slavery in Florida in 1856 and freed after the Emancipation Proclamation. As a biracial child, he worked as a page in the Senate and wrote down what he learned to share it with others. He later moved to Brooklyn and owned three newspapers, the New York Globe, the Freeman, and the New York Age. In 1901, he moved to Red Bank, New Jersey with his family. He was a force in journalism and most people, um, you know, recognize that he was, but unfortunately, he has existed in obscurity. Gilda Rogers is the executive director of the T. Thomas Fortune Cultural Center. He has been called a bridge to the modern day civil rights movement. He's a trailblazer because he's opening the doors for organizing, mm. political organizing. He's using his newspaper as a bully pulpit mm -hmm. to speak out on the failure of reconstruction, lynching. The house had fallen into disrepair. Rogers was a driving force, bringing awareness to who Fortune was and why funds were needed to save this landmark. Fortune was very progressive in economics and, you know, trying to create a, a, a foundation economically for African American people. He started National Afro Business and um, Investment Corporation that to help African American people at that time be able to purchase homes because Obviously, we could not walk into a bank and get a loan. With a lot of help, the home was restored. The original staircase, fireplace, front door, and more preserved. Kerwin Webb is the board chair. He says Fortune's writings are still relevant. He wrote about economic independence, right? And the, the capacity of African American people to, the need to, and the capacity of them to actually build their own institutions, to help build their communities. The group that runs the center hopes that it attracts young people to come and learn about their local history and find some inspiration. One of the programs that we have is the Fortune Tellers program. Our belief is that in young people, we have everything that we need to actually change the dynamic of society. Mm -hmm. We just need the opportunity and the space to help them cultivate those gifts that they already have. It sounds like you really focus on the arts here. Why is that important? Because the arts are transcending. The arts help people see things in a different way. Uh, the arts give us a new perspective. Rogers says Fortune teaches the importance of using your voice. One of his poems hangs on the wall titled, There Is No Death. The last line, I shall live again. And indeed he is through this new cultural center. In Red Bank, New Jersey, Meg Baker, CBS 2 News.